time now. Okay. We are live. Uh, hello, Pratisha. Uh, yes. Thank you for joining us today for beginners gardening workshop. We are already live. On. So over to you. Tell us about yourself. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jitendra, uh, for giving me the honor to be the speaker of the day. And yes, uh, myself, I'm Pratisha Hazarika. I'm a homemaker. I'm from Guwahati, Assam, and so I'm also a trained abacus teacher. But now my recent hobby passion you can say my love is gardening it's totally gardening so today i would like to take you to a tour of my balcony garden a very important part so here i am with my most loved space of mine that's my beautiful balcony and let me show you how i have organized it as you can see i'll show you this is the wash basin and how i have utilized the space it's known as macrame okay uh, it is the three layered macrame where you can uh, put the pots and it gives you a very beautiful look so it's made of jute or you can uh, there are ropes different kind of ropes that are made with so this is a concept of vertical garden like when there is a space constraint and you want to use more of it more of the space then you can use this type of hanging uh, macrames where you can stack your pots and you can see on top i have a uh, grill and i have also used macrames over there they are the spider plants monstera singonia and here we have i got this stand the racks from amazon a uh, beautiful racks are available online nowadays so it's how you use the space i have this beam so i used it to put my succulents over here as you can see my balcony it receives a very beautiful sunshine so everything uh, is perfect over here not too much not too low so my plants really thrive very well these are different type of succulents uh, this is lithop that's hawthia this is foxtail again and here you can see i have personally made this jute hangers where i can hang my pots so see here also i'm using the space like when you are in balcony you need to utilize the space in, and without looking clumsy and you can add the, to the beauty with some wind chimes and that's the extended part of my balcony where i have used exclusively for my succulents because and cactus because as you can see succulents love sunshine the it shouldn't be harsh or else they will get burned but yes with the sunshine proper sunshine they change their color this is a pink moonstone this is dusty rose they change their color this is a hawthia so this is the extended part i have put the grill i have extended like this 
so that I can use the space. And below, I have my other plants that can take the sunshine more. Like they thrive, they do good. This is the snake plant. Jades. Bamboo plant. That's my Aprajita, Jasmine. And over here you can see uh, how I have used this cane stand uh, so that it gives a beautiful look. It's a three layer cane stand. I have Monstera, spider plant. I have a bonsai, aloe, ferns. rubber plant and over here this is specially for my saplings for the orchids that doesn't need harsh sunlight and on top so what we do in balcony we have to always see the proper sunlight the area, the space, uh, will it be affected by the rain, okay? And how you can utilize the space. Space management is extremely important for balcony decor and plantation because many plants need direct sunlight or some needs indirect sunlight, some needs uh, more water, some needs less water. So we have to know as a beginner, what is the requirement of the plant? You can see here, these shelves are made exclusively for my succulents and pothos. They love sun rays, so I have placed them over here. And towards the outer side, I have kept all my flowering plants. As you can see, jasmine, aprajita, because they, tend, they can take the harsh sunlight. It will not affect them. Adeniums, bulbs are coming. My orchid. Snake plants, they, jades, they can take the sun, uh, the direct sunlight. And here is the beautiful part of my balcony where I hang my plants. I would like to share with you, as you can see, already loops are there where I can hang, right? But I again uh, invented, I utilized a space, like again, I hang another one over here so that it looks beautiful. And uh, the space is also used very well. Similar way, I have taken this S hook from the kitchen and you can see, and I am really fond of make rings. Uh, they really give you a very aristocratic uh, look, some classic kind of look. That's why I have used it. And that's my beautiful filling drone. That's Manjula, a variety of money plant pothos. Spider plant, it's a very good air purifier as well. And here also I have three hanging plants. You all must be wondering how do I water? It's like on top. Well, I have kept plants that needs less watering, right? So on and off, I have a stair, I have a ladder, I climb and I water them. So they are happy in their place. And same goes with them. I have stacked them on top because photos don't need too much of water, neither Zizi nor the snake plant. So they can stand without water. And I really love some gen space of mine. I love Buddha. I believe in spirituality. I do my meditation. So these are the things that adds to my inner peace. You can see there is English ivy. This is the money plant. 
that we all have the common money plan when i started off as a beginner i knew that there was only one money plan i never had any idea that there was such variety of money plan i didn't even know that they were known as potos too but yes with knowledge with uh, communication and gaining more and more knowledge now here i am with you all to share my experience and my journey towards gardening you can see that's hoya oxalis black zizi that's my beautiful it's in a total shape terracotta pot havathia monstera snake plant and beneath you can see so i have stacked them according to their requirements like if i put them outside then the leaves will burn so i have put them where they get the indirect sunlight the jade it needs sunlight this is my bonsai jade so i have kept it towards the outer side ferns they love to be misted my beautiful hoya she is having new growth even hoya doesn't like direct sunlight so i have kept her towards the corner and these are the varieties of succulents and cactus you can see i have used the terracotta pots for succulents terracotta and ceramic pots are very good because it helps them in air circulation and with proper water drainage and you should always see that there should be a hole for the water to go out never buy a pot where there is no proper drainage there is no hole this is my cup full of havathia and jade i'm really fond of ceramic different kind of ceramic pots and i do use plastics but we have to be very careful we have to get the holes uh, if there is no holes then we have to get it done and then while watering we have to because they don't absorb the water it gets retained over there these are the varieties of succulents and these are the house plants for beginners what i want to say that we shouldn't rush like when we are beginning with gardening then we should go slow we should go one at a time like as i said earlier i didn't knew what was money plant i just knew that there was one variety of money plant that we saw during our childhood days which our parents used to have but then slowly with proper knowledge uh with communicating with the plant community i came to know lot many things so this is how my balcony looks and yes you can get small stands like this where you can use your plants to keep your plants they increase the height and they also look beautiful for the beautification part so we can start off let me uh, pratisha thank you very much yeah. for giving the tour of the garden okay it doesn't feel like we were in a balcony it felt like <laughs> we were in a uh, jung the jungle and uh, seeing so many species of uh, plants yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just exactly. mind boggling it's unbelievable uh, our viewers are constantly uh, giving you the award of best balcony garden ever <laughs> these kinds of the so comments i'm getting much. 
Thank you and so much. Uh, that's what Definitely I wanted to say. Definitely, painting such a. Mm-hmm. Uh, my balcony was not like this before. When I started three years back, my balcony, I just had few plants with me. I started with three plants, but then I grew with those three into hundred, two hundred, three hundred, and now I have more than four hundred plants with me. I have three balconies. This is one, and another two I have in the other side of my flat. so uh, it's a step by step journey it's not a journey that at one go we get the whole thing we rush and we get it no we have to have patience gardening teaches us to be patient to adore our plants to learn our, about our plants that's what i want to say to my friends that do not rush just go slow one at a time and uh first of all don't go don't rush for those exotic plants but rather choose those simple plants which are easy to care because like different human beings have different uh, set of body structure frame same goes with the plants there are varieties of plants we need to know what is their requirement we just because money plant has a different requirement zz has a di- different requirement if some plants or um, like fruits or veggies need more water some may not want that like succulents they don't need water the regular watering will kill them their roots will get rot so we have to be very patient very clear and we shouldn't rush we need to gain that knowledge we need to learn and we have to be open to take up uh, knowledge like when i was a beginner i used to keep asking from the plant community people what is this what is that plant's name how do i take care so slowly i learned that even for soil there are so many things like for succulent it's a different set of soil we need to use for flowering plants it's again different and some plants they don't even need soil <laughs> they are air plants they just they just need to be um, dipped in water for a while and then they survive they are known as air plants so knowledge is very important like the like we care for our body we have to care for our plants it's not that aap ghar leke aa gaye you got one money plant you got few more and then uh, you kept it aside or you kept on giving water no no that will not work out you have to see like my first morning routine is i wake up i thank god and then i come to my balcony i take a tour of my balcony i see each and every plant if there is a yellow leaf there is a dry leaf if the stems are mushy or if it's overwatered did i do some blunder so lot many things are there you have to see that you have to give that time for them they need your time and some are there if you ignore them also they do so good like my zizi i want to show you this is my beautiful zizi you can see and it's fine like for beginners if you kill some plants also then also it's fine because even i killed killed many plants <laughs> without knowing without having the knowledge like how much water is required we tend to kill our plants not by underwatering but by overwatering we have to be very careful that we shouldn't overwater our plants i had made a note like we need to water our plants thoroughly then frequently i hope you got my point because when you water your plant you have to check the soil that's very important because now see for example i'll show you let me put my camera on the tripod just give me a moment can i have to just just give me a moment and then yes so i hope it's okay with you from to spare me a while so that i can fix the tripod yes. 
okay just give me a moment yes okay yeah so where was i yes i was like how we need to water how do we know that what is uh, when our plants need to be watered so the best part is you have to put your finger and check it see so my this photo doesn't need water because it's already moist the soil is already moist so for another couple of days we will not water this plant what we usually do we love our plants so much that we keep watering we keep watering and they rot and they die so we shouldn't do that so maybe next time when i see if i see the soil the top layer soil is totally dried up then only i'll pour water i'll pour it from below so that i'll see the water drips down okay that means it's completely thoroughly watered आप जब पानी देते हो अच्छे से पानी दीजिए वॉटर इट प्रॉपरली थर्डली एंड देन कीप इट असाइड अंटिल एंड अंडर्स द टॉप सॉइल इज नॉट ड्राई सो दिस प्लान डज नीड वॉटर एंड ऑल्सो आई वॉन्ट टू शेयर लाइक एज यू कैन सी दिस इज इन अ प्लास्टिक कंटेनर वॉट वी ड्यू वेन वी गो टू अर नर्सरी वी गेट लॉट्स ऑफ प्लांट्स राइट and what we do immediately we come back home we take some pots we repot them but no i used to do that before but that's a very wrong concept we have to let the plant adjust to the new environment like i have taken this maybe two weeks back so i kept it as like that i will not do the repotting right now because let her grow here because there is lots of space and until and unless there is no root bonding i will not change the soil right so what we can do we, if you have a beautiful pot you can just put it inside like i have used this cane decor piece i have put it inside so there it is it becomes a beautiful piece you can put it in the center table or in the corner of your balcony or in your bedroom or in your study room anywhere green plants always spread positivity wherever you put them they will only give you good energies and then i would like to also say as a beginner we need to know which plant needs more sunlight which plant needs less sunlight because without that knowledge what we do like for jade i get lots of queries that they say that ma'am my jade is a uh, dropping leaves my jade is not doing good now here you can see this is my jade and it's doing so good according to feng shui they say the people they keep it inside they it brings prosperity but what happens that's not the point jade needs sunlight jade loves sunlight so you have to keep it in a bright sunny place where it can thrive so this is my jade and also with uh, these are the beautiful uh, pots that comes with hooks okay so you can just hang it in your balcony in any place of your house facing outside facing towards the sun so that it can thrive and it can grow and also you can multiple your plants if you know the proper way that's called propagation you know so for a beginner first you need to take care of your plants that's the mother plant and then when you are expertized how you can handle it you can start with the propagation process like how from a mother plant you can bring lots and lots of baby plants also let me keep it aside pratisha and, we have uh, yeah uh, quite many questions now So okay. we'll take a few now. Yeah, sure. Uh, Raghunath Shrivastava is asking, what are succulents? Uh, basically, so he has never bought a succulent, but he is planning to get one. Okay. So can you explain uh, how he can start with succulent? Which 
sa clinic and bayan how he can take care of it yeah definitely so let me show you what is succulent succulents are plants that has thick leaves thick and fleshy leaves okay they store water in these leaves so very important like for succulent you have to have a proper knowledge of their soil because succulents and cactus they need porous soil soil where the water doesn't retain the water has to go out they don't like to be uh, they don't like to stay in moist um, soil which will and if they stay for too long overwatering will kill them their leaves will turn uh, like uh, they will become mushy and they will get rotten so i would like to say if you want to get succulent then first of all you have to know what should be the succulent soil and for succulent soil you have to it's not only about garden soil there are proportion you have to take garden soil along with that you have to add a portion of um, sand because sand doesn't retain water then you have to add uh, cinders or charcoal chips right then you have to also add little bit amount of vermicompost cow dung ka jo hai na that you have to add and that you can add cinder or pyrite so succulent soil is a bit tricky but if you get the grip of the soil then things will work out very good they will bloom very well they will do very good so the soil and the container the pot that you're using for succulent because see succulents uh, come in a way small they are either like they come from a small size to not that big so you have to see what pot you are using like for this i have this ceramic pot see there is a drainage hole so for succulents this kind of small pots do really good because for plants if the uh, plant is small and you take a big pot what happens the when you pour water it will the whole soil will get moist and will be used and slowly what happens the root keeps absorbing and they get rot so the best way for succulent is to have a proper soil mixture and the proper pot let me show you one more succulent let's see this is one more succulent of mine as you can see it's broad as it has bunch it is in a bunch so i left little bit of space around and for it to bloom but see the plant and the pot so the your pot should not be more bigger than the plant okay and the soil is very important and the main trick for succulent is please do not water it frequently they don't like to be watered frequently except like you can during winters 14 days uh, once you can water summers uh, they do need because as the heat depending on the climate of your area i stay in assam so i do water them every after 10 days and for succulents please do not mist them and please do not water them from top because they store water in the leaves and they don't like that so always water it from the bottom near the roots and uh, very less and a proper soil will help out i hope that was beneficial for you Uh, thank you pradesh i will move to another que uh, next question yeah sure so some of the beginners are asking how do they start gardening what plants they should uh, start with how to take care of plant uh, are there any tips for that for starting the gardening okay for starting as i said you before please go with the easy handy plants easy i want to say like you can just give me a moment you can like you can opt for money plants they are very easy and you can propagate them as well and for soil also you don't have to worry much simple garden soil you can add little bit of vermicompost and little bit of coca pit and that will do so i would suggest you for beginners please go with easy handy plants like potos snake plant zizi plant spider plant okay 
then there are varieties of sanjivaria uh, like snake plants are there then peace lilies uh, and rubber plants uh, erica palm so there is a wide range of plants that you can try your hands on you just have to be like first you have to go with easy carrying and for fertilizer i i didn't mention that but please do not jump into the market fertilizers uh, in the beginning part always go for the household fertilizers like i use uh, tea bags green tea bags then i use egg pills pulses water banana peel fertilizer um onion peel fertilizers so uh, potato peel fertilizers so everything is in our house so go for that use that once a month you need to fertilize your plants because like the way we have vitamins and uh, capsules we take care of our skin our body we detox our plants also need to be um, fertilized so that they can come up with new growth that's very important and also uh, uh, yeah one question yeah Yeah. Next question I have from Vinita. She is asking if she can uh, grow some flowers using seeds in May month. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely, you can. Um. Definitely. But flowering part comes with the uh, during the winter season. But yes, like uh, as the affordable organic store also has come up with their Rajni Gandhas and all bulbs and seeds. you can offer that or else you can definitely go for it but flowering plants need more during uh, blooms very well during the winter time that is the seasonal plants seasonal you can grow from the bulbs from the pulps from the seeds because a uh, flowering plants certain plants like certain flowering plants like lilies Uh, orchids they have a certain time to bloom so th that is during the time of the winter september till uh, february march and yes other plants are blooming plants like the roses hibiscus jasmines they bloom throughout the year rajnigandha you can try it out and you can give it in direct sunlight flowering plants they love uh, bright sunlight flowering plants and fruits they love uh, bright sunlight so sunlight is very important and they uh, do love water good so another question i have from pranjal so pranjal is asking question about artificial uh, lighting for plants uh, well so how he can use artif artificial lighting a uh, well pranjal in that case uh, i have not used artificial light for my plants because by god's grace i have beautiful sunlight uh, my plants are blessed with that in a natural way so i have not tried as of now with artificial light but yes uh, you can uh, you if you are willing to uh, grow or do then you can put it they do love lights like you can keep it in your below a neon light or like if you have a table lamp you can put it there money plants and all they do good but moral of the story is that plants love natural light that's all i learned because if you see if you put a plant snake plant if you keep it inside the house for month after month and you keep one snake plant outside you can see the difference so natural light is very important Uh, another question i have from anjali tiwari she is asking how to take care of uh, dianthus and hibiscus okay. and she has planted a jasmine plant which stopped uh, flowering 2 weeks ago so how she can uh, fix it fix okay so uh, well anjali thank you for the question and the for how to take care of your flowering plants like for hibiscus a very important part that we forget maximum time is we forget to tilt the soil tilting is very important and also repotting your plant like when did you last repot your hibiscus i would like to know and if you haven't repotted for a long time or if you have not given any kind of fertilizer to it or if you have not pruned it 
prune means uh, chopping up uh, chopping out the dead leaves and cutting the edges so these are the very important things that helps a plant to get new branches and to grow very well to do good and uh, for the jasmine i would like to say you can add banana peel fertilizer it is very good or if you have npk fertilizer you can give that as well and please uh, you can chop it so that new branches come and now jasmines are blooming my jasmines are blooming they will definitely bloom till the soil water it thoroughly give a good fertilizer pulses water or rice water banana peel water and then see the change and be careful with mealybugs hibiscus tend to get mealybugs so always keep a check on your hibiscus so that there is no mealybugs So, uh, Pratisha, you mentioned yes. mealybugs. So, uh, for this, a question has come that hibiscus plants are getting white in fermentation. Mm -hmm. I believe they are talking about mealybugs. Yes, so exactly. How, and every time it is killing the plants. So how to get rid of it? <laughs> I also struggle a lot with these mealybugs. My God, I really don't like them. They really. Uh, Stick to the plants uh, with the hibiscus, roses, even for succulents. And how to get rid is uh, well. There are n numbers of ways where you have to constantly uh, put on, put your effort. If your plant is too much affected, then I would say you need to cut those affected areas, or else you need to you dilute. neem oil you can get it in amazon or any shop you will get it neem oil a uh, little bit of neem oil uh, in the warm water and little bit of soap uh, soap solution that what i do or else you can take soap solution and baking soda uh, either ways you can do you dilute it uh, you need to have a spray jar and you need to spray it thoroughly on the parts where mealybug has attacked and you have to keep a check mealy bugs they are also underneath the leaf that's the best place they uh, so whenever you see you spray you have to and always spray the pesticide always you have to do it after the sunset and later on you can rinse off with water and very important thing which i forgot to mention to you all is please dust your plants Please clean the leaves of the plant with a soft cotton cloth. You can dip it in water and clean. The way we clean our body, we take bath. Our plants also need uh, to be clean. The leaves needs to be clean. So that was a very important thing. Uh, next question is from Priyanka. She is asking how she can take care of uh, dahlias uh, plant. She wants to start growing them. dahlia uh, you mean right it's a seasonal plant pranka yeah. uh, and dahlias you can grow it during the season time that's the winter time my flat uh, my balcony doesn't have that much of space for dahlias uh, so i have not tried uh, as of now dahlias but definitely in the coming winters i'll do try well same way as it's a flowering plant i will definitely say it will need ample uh, sunlight proper watering and fertilizer these are the three important things that you need to maintain for flowering plants you have to keep a check on the amount of water you are giving the sunlight that they are receiving and what fertilizer you are giving to your plants for the bloom to be big and good uh anjali is asking about how to take care of dianthus i hope i'm pronouncing it right Uh, yes dianthus anjali uh, well uh, i have not tried out with dianthus as of now so i'm so sorry i won't be able to tell you but again as plants there is like you have to uh, see about the soil uh, the soil composition amount of water that you are giving to your plant and fertilizer and the sunlight uh i have a question from minakshi so she is not able to grow coriander fenugreek or spinach in pots or open garden as well they just just don't germinate so how she can 
improve the germination of these plants okay uh, so minakshi first of all when you germinate coriander you have to see what seeds uh, from where have you taken the seeds or from where have you purchased it because the seed quality also matters a lot and during the germination process the proper amount of sunlight the soil and watering is very important you shouldn't over water it what happens during the germination process even if the it sprouts if it, it comes with over watering what we do we tend to rot the seed so we have to be very careful uh, how to give the sunlight and the water and also the seed which is very important because a good quality seed will give you a good product right we always believe that uh, something good that is um, what we sow that will only come so we, you be very uh, particular from where you get the seeds and definitely it will work uh, another question for nakshi is uh, how to grow plants in grow bags should we keep stones gravel in the bags just like the uh, other uh, terracotta plants okay so uh, for grow bags like for me what i feel good about is like plants they do best with uh, terracottas or ceramics but now the grow bag concept has come definitely you can try soil will be needed again what plant you are uh, what plant you are putting in that grow bag what kind of plant is it a foliage a flowering one or uh, it's a indoor or it's an outdoor plant so soil will be needed and yes you can decorate it with gravels cinder and all and it gives a and you can use small miniatures also you can put it there it will look good uh one question from pranka is can gz plants be put indoor in a room with uh, just a small window yeah definitely definitely gz is such a plant if you ignore it thrives very well they don't love to be like too pampered or they are not uh, uh they they just love like you get me you keep it aside and you forget about me and don't water me much they are of that attitude so yes definitely it can thrive but yeah once a bloom uh, once in a while if you put it a little bit in indirect sunlight then um, they also do good but without they are the ones that thrives in low light and without water also and here you can see my zz the new stem has come and the soil if you can see as i have said you see it's dry i have not watered it so it's better not to water and once a while when you water you water it thoroughly and yes in low light zz is very good snake plant zz they do really good so another question from pranjal is so most of the flowers bloom in winters but he want to get flowers in summers also so is it okay to use uh, plant growth promoters such as oxin which can introduce uh, induce flowering artificially uh, well pranjal i have never used it and i don't force nature that is like things that are meant to happen naturally i uh, followed that policy only uh, so yes but why you have to put a uh, plant booster you can naturally summer flowers are there hibiscus is there rose is there peace lily is there bougainvillea is there you don't have to put any booster for that they naturally grow throughout the year so you can try out with such plants also and uh, we have question from anahita okay when can we grow sunflower ah uh, sun, sunflower yeah it can be grown every throughout the year but best is the winter best is a uh, winter time actually all uh, flowering plants best time is like that winter time uh, from september till march that's a very beautiful time to grow sunflowers and all the flower season flowers A question from Neha Thakur: What is the best method to germinate seeds? Best method I have tried with soil only. 
so i would always go for because i don't want uh, some fancy uh, process i am still an old soul who believes in those old technologies uh, so best way i always find soil where you put the seed the proper soil with coca peat and all where you put and then they sprout so pratisha we have more question do you want to take them now or you want to continue with no no definitely this question answer round is really good so you can continue i'll be happy to help my friends okay so neha has a question that she tried to germinate seeds in coco peat mm-hmm. but the seedling goes down after two leaves have come okay because uh, it's a uh, whenever the seedling uh, the leaf comes down that means it's overwatering because coco peat uh, it retains the moisturizer right what is coco peat it is uh, the powdered form of coconut husk so and it retains the moisturizer so you have to add certain amount of garden soil as well the, uh, and the watering should be less that's why so next time try with proper uh, with coca peat as well as garden soil mix it well and put a check on your water how much you are watering and then see definitely it will be give you good result uh, so for people who are trying to germinate seeds i would like to say this based on my experience that mm-hmm. try out different methods with germination how it uh, goes well with you yeah that's there are what so that's many what, yeah th- so that's what uh, i'm not there are lot many methods it's a huge chapter of germination from seed to a seedling to a plant it's a again a huge chapter so definitely people should try should try different ways and means i have friends who have tried uh, brinjal uh, like in an um, um, what you say eggs shell so see people are trying out different ways whatever is successful for you go for that that will work yeah so uh, one question i have uh, from a participant that if they use soap solution to uh, spray for mealybugs on the plant and then next day they wash the plant so this soapy solution will go into the soil so does it affect the plant no you have to be careful how much amount of soap solution you have given to the plant and how you have sprayed the plant like if your uh, like for example if over here the mealybug has attacked then and if you put the spray bottle like this then all the soap water will go down so you have to spray in such a way that it touches the stem the affected area and you can also whip it off with a cotton so that it doesn't drip down but if the plant is big for hibiscus and all so you can spray it thoroughly as it's a big plant they can take it it will not because it's not harmful chemical for mealybugs it is but the plant can take it but if it's a small plant then be careful the way you or you can take a small spray bottle and you can spray it and with a wet cotton you or a tissue you can just uh, remove it the bugs so that uh, the soap water doesn't drip and uh, go into the soil and doesn't affect the root but it doesn't affect i have tried many a times and for succulents you can use johnson's uh, your bud any your bud will do uh another question we have jack from jacko so he is asking that my cherry tomato plant have started flowering uh, any care tips at this stage okay uh well i'm so sorry to say that uh, i'm not uh, like too good with vegetables i am more into uh, flowers and foliage but definitely i would say with my experience i have uh coriander's and i have uh, lemon and i have curry leaves and all those i think the best way will be a good amount of fertilizer for a good bloom natural fertilizer will also do and put a check on the soil water and the amount of sunlight that they receive because as i stay in a flat my space is very constrained so i would love to have a garden kitchen garden huge one but uh, as for space constraint i am more into like um, the small plants 
which accommodates in my balcony. Question from Vinuta: uh, Can we plant a gazania seeds now? Uh, well, definitely you can do that. You can definitely plant it. Okay. And uh, another question from Akarsh: We have how to grow lotus with seed easily. Mm -hmm. Akash, again, I will say I'm so sorry to disappoint you. As you can see, I have no lotus, and I know I'm not bastard in that. But yes, this is in my wish list that I too need to grow lotus, a small one kind of thing. But I have not tried as of now lotus, so I'm so sorry if I have disappointed you. But once I get it, I'll do it. I'll definitely let you know. Um, I would let. Like Akash, know what I have uh, learned from other uh, our uh, some of our customers. So yeah, yeah, please, uh, you'll please. find uh, you'll find a method of uh, removing the tip of the lotus by rubbing it or by uh, cutting it using some scissor and then drop that seed into water. Okay. And I've seen uh, lotus seed germinating even overnight. Oh wow, that, that's it, good. I mean, it's really, uh, it's really fast to germinate, and it'll grow really fast. Even in uh, in in a day, it will grow two inches. So, definitely, again, definitely. we are repeating that. Try different methods and uh, give it a try. So yeah, that's what, and it's something very new to me. I'll also try it out. Thank you so much. That is one of the easiest. Flowers to grow, so definitely try this. Another yeah. question from uh, Priyanka: We have. I propagated my fawn lately. Should I keep it in indirect sunlight? Yes, uh, please do not uh, expose it to direct sunlight. Keep it in indirect sunlight, and uh, slowly uh, just uh, mist it for a while. They love to be misted, and harsh sunlight will harm them. Uh, it will burn. So keep it in indirect sunlight. A question from Ishika. Yeah. Uh, my sweet potato vine leaves are not growing. What she can do? Yeah, it's not growing. So have you checked uh, the water? Uh, like um, why it's not growing? What must be the reason or the amount of sunlight where you have placed it, Ishika? So these are the things. These are the factors uh, that affect uh, the vines. You have to see it receives a good amount of sunlight. If it's in a damp area where it's not receiving proper sunlight, then also they don't thrive. They don't do good. Like you can see the photos behind, they are that they are growing, and even this. And but if you see this, I kept this photo inside and see how leggy it is. So this is the difference when the plants get proper sunlight and a good amount of water. Then they thrive well and they do good. So please check the position where you have placed your plant, your pot, or else just uh, shift a little bit and see the change. We need to shift uh, time to time our plant, our pots from one direction to another. Uh, moving to next question from Anjali: What is the best method to grow strawberry seeds? Anjali, uh, well, for strawberries, I have not tried my hands yet. So, Jitendra, you can help her with that query. Uh, yeah, Anjali. So, uh, it's easy to grow strawberry seeds, and uh, I would recommend you to take help of YouTube here. Mm -hmm. uh, we generally recommend uh, germinating it in uh, cocoa peat because the seeds are really small. So those should be in a small seedling tray so that you can take care of them properly. And once they grow one inch, two inches high, you can transplant into a pot. But uh, strawberry has to be grown in a, a colder environment. So wait till September, November to try strawberry seeds. Uh, Patisha, one question yes. from Rohan we have. 
uh, his hibiscus is not growing well and it's not flowering at all so what can do for hibiscus i would suggest you to give fertilizer npk fertilizer you can get it from amazon or natural fertilizer or, and please change your soil once uh, if you can let me know when you have uh, repotted your hibiscus plant and if not of late you have not done that please repot it add some more of uh, vermicompost cow dung add that uh, with the uh, normal garden soil and repot it and use npk fertilizer or household fertilizer and they will really do good trust me and hibiscus loves sunlight please damp place they will not do good you need to give them ample of sunlight so that they bloom very well and they come up with very bright colors question from um rohan what flowering seeds we can sow now uh for now i would say with from with my knowledge i would go for rajnigandha but maximum of flowering seeds and bulbs that you uh, get or come across or they will bloom during the season time that is the winter time the liliums and all but for me uh, throughout the day, uh, throughout the time if you want throughout the year then rajnigandha will do good question from shubha bahuguna can we grow ginia seeds now ginia is also again a season flower so i would say the best time will be during the uh, winter time september till march that is the uh, nature season flowers always bloom during the season time so we should uh, try uh, our hands at that time only now is like the summer time so we have to now, now the more is like of flowering jasmine rose hibiscus they are the ones that flowers and yeah foliage you can try anthoniums are there but for season flower petonias and ginias and phlox uh, bougainvillea uh, this uh, dahlias uh, all those things uh, liliums uh, they are during the winter season time so that will be the best time for you to try your hands question from shubha can we keep mogra in full sunlight yes definitely all flowering uh, plants they love um, this uh, sunlight so definitely you can keep it and uh, uh, water it frequently mogras jasmine they love to be watered frequently flowering plants love to be watered frequently always remember that indoor plants they don't need frequent watering but for mogras jasmines um, aprajita hibiscus roses they need to be watered frequently they love that so question from jacko how to use neem spray on leaves basically uh i do use it once in a while in a month i do that so you have to take the concentrate like uh not half cup in 1 liter of water i have a spray bottle a 1 liter spray bottle so i give half if i say in spoon wise then 1 teaspoon not the tablespoon teaspoon is more than sufficient because it's concentrated right just shake it give it a nice shake and uh, you can mist it on your plants and if you want to go in a natural way that is the neem oil or else you can take neem leaves you can boil the water and then you can add it with uh, water and then you can spray either way you can do that can we plant dahlia plants now well you can but the bloom will uh, dahlias are meant for winters right so definitely the bloom will be uh, during the winter time that is their time dahlias and all the flowering plants petonias and all kisanthima a question from shubha are ceramic pots good in summers for flowering plants yes definitely ceramic pots are really good uh, you can use it and uh, for flowering plants and the pots size should be big 
definitely uh, i don't use that much of plastic but uh, i go more with terracottas and ceramic pots so definitely you can use all these are ceramic pots my they are ceramic because they help uh, in the air circulation in the soil and water drainage what happens with plastic they retain the moisturizing level in the soil so that's not good so i prefer more of ceramic and definitely for flowering plants you can use oh we have question from monica any tips for growing lavender plants okay in that case jitendra you will be the best person to help monica with that i have not tried so even i'll get the benefit of it please uh, you can share us with the lavender one I'll I'll pause the apologies here because uh, lavender plants require special efforts. So mm. Monica, I would request you to refer to some of the YouTube videos for lavender plants. That's what. That's what. Uh, I also haven't tried lavender. Uh, what I want to say to my friends, my uh, viewers, is that what I said in the beginning: we should not rush with the exotic ones, the rare ones, the difficult ones. Rather, we should. put our hands into the very easy ones the good ones which thrives so that the result is good so what we usually do we run after the things that are very hard and i was like with high humid plants so many of them have died i couldn't thrive them so uh, go slow go easy go with the handy plants uh, and then see how beautiful your garden becomes and yes lavender it's a good thing so i'll also give a try maybe not now but later on uh question from seha kaf so she has tried everything from neem oil to home remedies for mealy bugs but they are not going away from uh, her huge pothos plants okay they don't go away so easily sneha you have to consistently uh, keep uh, like uh, with a student with a weak student what we do we keep saying them parho parho karo karo so mealy bugs are like that only they are very stubborn very irritating so constantly you have to take care of it you have to use your you have to use cotton you have to use this hands you can't get um, yucky or you can't get scared you have to use johnson's bug matlab jo bhi pade whatever you have to do you have to get rid of them so you have to take care constantly you have to like uh, once a week you have to give the treatment and then definitely the change will come but again they are prone to attack so what i would suggest the plant which is been infected by mealy bugs please keep them away from the not infected ones because mealy bugs tends to spread so always keep it aside keep it aloof and we can't lose hope <laughs> we have to win against mealy bugs rohan uh, is clarifying his question about hibiscus mm. his plant has grown really well in a pot and it is almost 2 feet okay and it is in a 12 inch pot okay and he is also giving fertilizer but only problem is it is not flowering okay uh, rohan this is the time for flowering this is the time for hibiscus to bloom okay if not if it's not flowering then uh, you can check what soil composition it you gave was it only the garden soil or have you trimmed it uh, have you pruned it uh, in a while so please see and uh, just have a look if your plant is attacked by mealy bugs or as such or what fertilizer and what amount how much amount of and in what frequency you are giving the fertilizer lot many things comes into that um, account so uh, just see once uh, use little bit more of vermi compost that i would suggest and give it in full sunlight and definitely it will bloom because this is now the time for the hibiscus to bloom mines are blooming downstairs beautiful colors have come up orange yellow red pink so you have to give it the amount of sunlight that needs and just see uh, why it's not blooming just see to it or change the fertilizer that you are using go for a N npk composition 
and fertilize it uh, every after 14 days. So, like how Pratisha said earlier, that keep trying and keep learning, maybe by reporting, maybe by changing fertilizer. So, until you know what works for your plants. Exactly. Okay. From I uh, will take one last question. Uh, we are already past five minutes our time. So uh, Meru Jain is asking which vegetables are best to start in summers and what fertilizers they should be using for vegetables like tomatoes. Okay. For summers, like lots of vegetables are there. As I'm not into too much of uh, kitchen gardening, I am I have few selected uh, 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 vegetables in my balcony so i would like jitendra to take over to this question and help our viewer with the answer so meru uh, meru uh, what i can suggest is uh, if you go to our store the affordable or any store uh, you can try out seaweed fertilizer i think pratisha can yes, explain do. yes it's a very good fertilizer. yeah so that is also that you can try out mm -hmm. and definitely cow dung manure is way to go yeah. it's easily available vermicompost mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so try those and uh, i think those should be good enough for most of the vegetable plants uh, so i have tried to take most of the questions and uh, you guys are most welcome to reach out pratisha she goes by uh, the handle plant mom underscore 12 uh, on Instagram. So reach out to her for any of the questions. I will lock this uh, handle in the YouTube chat also. We are still getting a lot of questions, Pradisha. It was but... so good. <laughs> it was so nice interacting with all of you. Let's everyone in this phase of COVID um, plant more green, um, do our meditation. Keep that um, green motive uh, on and let's um, motivate each and everyone to go with gardening, whether it be a male, female, child, whosoever. Let's everyone join in this journey of gardening because this is a stress therapy. The more you spend with plants, the more uh, is your peace of mind. So I would suggest everyone to plant at least one plant whether it be in your office desk, your home, anywhere. That's a good message. And Pratisha, I would like to uh, send you the thanks which I have received from so many uh, participants here. They have thanked you for answering the questions. Thank you so much. And they much. really like your and compliment your balcony garden. Thank and you so much. Thank you for... Uh, uh, giving your time uh, and thank you on behalf of affordable or next door thank so you we'll so be going uh, offline now thank you very much everyone you can always reach out to pratisha on plant mom underscore 12 on instagram yeah. thank, thank you, you so much thank you so pratisha we have gone off